No, we're going to be doing mostly new stuff tonight, so we should be okay. We'll go ahead and load the game and uh, load up from where I left off here. And this is where I left off here. I'm actually going to wait until morning so we can have a conversation with these guys in the daytime in the light. And as you can see, there's a group of bikers over here. Five bikes. Th five bikers. And a dude standing in leather who is not a biker, but you won't know that until you talk to him. It's a neat little town. Pumpkins in the back. Are they actually... Can you actually get these pumpkins? No, you can't actually pick these up. Oh, it's too bad. <laughs> Let's hope it anyway. All right. Can't pick up the pumpkins. Too bad. Let's talk to the first person right at the entrance of town. What does he have to say? Hey, you're not one of these bikers, right? If not, then get out of here as soon as possible. These friggin' bikers have made so much noise here that my poor Brahmin fled around the city. Now I can't drive them back to the corral. Well, all right. Tell me about the bikers. They came here from the north. At first one, then another, and, and now so many came as if they planned this. I don't know what they've forgotten in our small settlement, but we don't want to ask. I hope they leave soon. They only make trouble. Uh, tell me about the settlement, then. Our lovely Bridgeport. When our families moved here from the clutches of war in Reno, there was no one here. Only the old dilapidated houses covered with sand and dirt. We worked long and hard to turn this place into a something... Uh, something more or less fit to live. So you watch Brahmin here? Yeah, pretty much. I do look after Brahmin, but we have very few people. That's why everyone sometimes has to do a little bit of everything. I will gather the herd into the pen. You you can help? That's great. Remember, they are very stubborn when frightened, which will make it difficult to catch them. Okay, and that's all the dialogue he has. So, the cool thing about the cows is that it's a really simple quest. All you have to do is push them into place. Um, it helps a little bit if you're visible, but I'm not going to be visible. <laughs> I'm just going to go over, tell my character to just stand in, in a certain spot and then move them. Because that's all they do. You just uh, push them a couple times. You push them into the, the gate. And then I think one hex passed. Uh, yeah, one, one hex passed there. And then they'll do their own thing. Eh, which is neat. And there's three of them. There's this one, there's the one I just put in, and then there's this one up here. A bit of pushing. Once you get through it, it's not so bad. Oops. Can't run them into the car, though. Watch out for that. Nope. There we go. See, will that hit it? Yeah, it will. Perfect. And one last one. Ah, no, don't go that way. Wrong way, cow. Wait, I have some alcohol. Right? Not on me. Hold on. Let me try. Let me try something real quick. Something silly. Use this on the cow. Use the beer on the Brahmin. Oh, this is the one without that animation? Ah, uh, they, they forgot the script. Oh, that's too bad. So they forgot to add the script to the cow. Or they intentionally removed it. I don't know what. That's too bad. Especially since this is a kind of mod that has in intentionally taken steps to uh, prevent you from using alcohol on critters in order to get their stuff. Can you go through the fence? Yeah, all right. There we go. All right, over here. Let's start from here. I like here. Here, get in there. There we go. And one more. And there we go. That's all of them. Uh, he doesn't have a fence on it. I think your problem is more that you don't have a fence farmer dude but okay <laughs> can animals drink alcohol if you script it yes <laughs> most cows not the rest of the critters but most cows have a uh, a script attached to them that will do something when you use a beer or a booze on them 
Uh, not necessarily the case for any of the other critters, of, like the standing up people. However, if you do have, because this person has attached scripts to these characters that you can't use beer or booze on them. But if you do have beer or booze, you can sometimes use it on other critters around here. If you wanted to steal from them, it will lower their perception, which is pretty cool. Anyway, I got the rest of these cows in here, so let's talk to this guy. Thanks for the help with the Brahmin. If not for you, I would have had to chase them myself. They are unpredictable when scared. You're welcome. Let's use some beer on him. Yep, you can use beer on the redneck. You can use beer on this guy. Yep, you can use beer on the biker. He's cool with that. I think none of these people actually have anything on them, do they? Well, he has some psycho. Oh, I am definitely, definitely taking psycho from this person who only has a float message. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not giving up psycho. Uh, brass knuckles. I may as well sell it somewhere. Since I'm invisible, they can't do anything about it. Ha <laughs> ha! And there's nothing on that guy. Anything on this guy? No? Okay, so nothing on any of the other bikers? That's lame. Oh, can, is this a thing? Can I use it? What's in the newspaper machine? L nothing? You literally can't do anything with the newspaper machine. Can I repair it? Signs it. What, why is it? Why? Why does it have the use hand on it? Oh, well, whatever. Okay, so none of the bikers will talk to you. Except for one, of course. I mean, they'll all have floats. And they'll all say hello, the hello float, but they won't actually talk to you. So I guess we'll start with the biker guy here. What? I'm looking for Jay Kukish. You won't find him here. I think he's already in Hawthorne. It's a military base not far to the east. Why are you telling me this so easily? Because our gang has a special relationship with Jay. He's always been a lone wolf on his own. If you have business with him, go ahead. Feel free to catch up with him. As for me, I'm more worried about what we're all going to do now. He's made some fuss at Hawthorne, and we've responded to his call and gathered here. Now we're idle. Oh, I could give him this whole information. Let's do everything else first. Tell me about your gang. We are the people who couldn't find their place in modern society. Oh, look at Bigfoot. He's a veteran from Wind of War. When he realized that the local military was worse than the Raiders, he left to live by his own principles. And there's Weiner. His settlement has been destroyed by raiders. He had no choice but to seek revenge. Our gang helped him and gave him a new purpose in life. Tell me about yourself. How did you join the biker gang? I'm a veteran of the New Reno Civil War. Back then, local businessmen used to involve bikers in their shady deals. We were mercenaries, a strike force, until the situation got to the point where we were no longer needed. Turns out we were just being used, so we decided to spit in the face of the whole town. I wanted to be free. So why did Jay need to go to the Hawthorne? Well, Jay became interested in governmental vault. According to him, it is located somewhere in Nevada. He wanted to look for the coordinates on a military base. So you're waiting for a message from Hawthorne? Well, yeah, we could smell something's changing. Jay was spreading rumors that we better stay close to Hawthorne, that something was going to happen there. So we got together in Bridgeport, given that it was dangerous to stay in Hawthorne itself. And then here's the final piece of dialogue, which I guess I got for clearing out Hawthorne. The garrison in Hawthorne got jacked. Its automatic defense system no longer work. Might want to pay a visit there. Oh, really? Jay hasn't contacted us yet. We've been waiting for this news for quite a long time. Also, frankly speaking, the rednecks around here are starting to get on our nerves. We'll move to the base as soon as everybody's ready. Your report on the Hawthorne situation caused quite a stir. Apparently the bikers will soon leave Bridgeport to the light of the rednecks. All right. Uh, so that's all there is to the bikers. <laughs> You'd think there'd be another quest for them or something, but no, not from what I can tell. Um, all right. <laughs> well, here's a guy. You see a young inhabitant of Bridgeport. Although he tries to imitate the bikers, he still looks like a farmer. Hello. Who are you? You're not a biker, right? Well, if not, then we have nothing to talk about. And tell my dad that I'm part of the gang now. You're tired of being a farmer? Oh, that's right. I've always hated this shithole. The fuck? I can do better than that. I'll let my parents dig the dirt if they want, but I want to be free. Bikers became my idols ever since they first came here. They know so many things. They've seen so much. When I join their ranks, I'll be really happy. Okay, well, all right. So he wants to be a biker. Would your parents agree with that? Well, of course they would, but I wouldn't ask them. Living here is boring. I want to be with the bikers. What do you know about the bikers? Well, I made my decision. I want to join the gang. The rest doesn't matter where they live, what they eat. What's the difference? 
what's more important is they don't belong to anyone and they do whatever they feel is right. Now that's life. How are you going to join the bikers? Well, they'll test me. Probably it won't be easy. Not easy, but you're confident, right? Well, yes. Damn it, I'm willing to die trying. Listen, can you help me? There are two challenges I have to complete, and I may not be up to it. First is shooting a pistol. I don't even have one, not to mention shooting skills. <laughs> the second one is a fist fight. The chief said that no one's going to beat me to the death. I just have to stay on my feet while I'm being beaten. How will I get through the pain? This is not a game. Fine, you can say, I'm fine, I'll help you. It seems you have no choice other than to join the bikers. Okay, I'll get you a pistol and some painkillers. <laughs> You will? Awesome! Just hurry before they leave, otherwise I'll be left behind, and I'll have to wait until the next time they come. I'll keep that in mind, especially if I had some personal incentive. He slaps his forehead. How could I? Why was that my only option? Of course, I know a place where my dad keeps his stash. I don't know how much money there is, to be honest, I never asked, because I don't need any money in this shithole. If you help me, I'll tell you where the stash is. Great. Okay, so, you know, um, we got a quest to help him join the bikers. Let's talk about you joining the gang. They want to give me some tests. There are a few, but I'm worried about only about two. First is shooting a pistol. Second is a fist fight. The chief said that no one's going to beat me to death. I just have to stay on my feet while I'm beaten, beaten. Okay, so I got painkiller from the kit, from this kit. So I have a doctor's kit. I have a doctor's bag and a first aid kit here. So you can give him the painkiller from either one of those. Um, and of course, there's a couple other things you can do with him. But um, and they give him a pistol as well if I go went and grabbed a pistol. But there's more people to talk to around here. There's even a little trash can out here with some garbage in it. A new Coca-Cola bottle. A full one, apparently. Alright, so let's talk, start talking to people. What do they got hiding in here? Nothing. Alright. Did the wife say anything? No. Does she have anything on her? Just a knife. I'll take her knife. For no good reason. There we go. How about this guy? What do you want? Who is this? Redneck, okay. You don't look like a farmer. Tell me about yourself. No, I'm not a farmer. Sure, sometimes I help with the harvest and or at the slaughterhouse, but my main task is to dig through the ruins in search of anything useful. I'm also good with firearms and a little bit with mechanics, so my skills are needed in Bridgeport. You've been to the different places in the vicinity, right? Anything interesting around? Well, there are several places of interest. Uranium City, New Reno, Hawthorne. Surely you already know about them. I do, but... I'm going to go ahead and talk about them anyway. Tell me about Uranium City. An old mining town in the northwest. It was maintained by one of the bosses in Reno, and the ore was used to fuel the power plant. But something bad happened there, and now Uranium City is dying out. Well, not anymore. Tell me about Hawthorne. It's a military base in the northeast. I once spent a lot of time rummaging through the old houses there. Dangerous place. And it always has been, due to the rodents and robots. Now it's even more dangerous because of the prospectors who are ravaging the premises. There are always wars between different gangs marauding the place. All right. Besides the ruins in these cities, is there anything else noteworthy in these parts? Well, there is a highway to the southeast, but the nearest village in that direction is very far away. Some particularly desperate caravans try to master this trade route and drive between Las Vegas and New Reno, but not many manage to survive the journey. What else? To the south and southwest of the mountains is only a desert. It is a harsh place. It's impossible to live there, let alone travel. No one even tries. I don't remember a single instance of anyone making it up from the south. Can there be anything beyond the desert? I doubt it. What else? Well, there are some highlands between us and the desert to the south. Sometimes I hunt there, but never far into the mountains. I don't want to meet the local tribe who inhabits that place. Tell me about that tribe in the south. These savages had almost forgotten how to speak. The old tribe has probably been isolated from the outside world since the Great War, so they were forced to inbreed with their relatives. I also know that they are cannibals. The shaky body syndrome and the gnawed human bones in the parking lots are proof of that. How do I know? I've seen it. I even had to confront them a couple times. They fight like animals, but what can they do with their clubs and spears against my rifle? Uranium City, Hawthorne. All right, enough about geography. Better tell me about bikers. I have nothing against their way of life, but they should not impose their laws on ordinary people. We didn't call them here. When there were only a few bikers in Bridgeport, it wasn't a problem. But now they're starting to pressure us. A bit more and our beautiful town will quickly become a war zone. Alright, and that's all the dialogue he has. Bye. Hmm, okay. Let's see what else we got here. Stop right there! Who are you? 
If you're one of the bikers, then get the fuck out. This is my house, and I'm not going to share it, you freeloader scum. <laughs> the bikers are my family now. <laughs> Calm down, I'm not a biker. I'm just a traveler. <laughs> I guess I could do this one, but I think it probably doesn't matter which one you do. I'm just a traveler, skeptically looking at you. Is that so? Fine, we can talk for now. Just watch yourself, for you're going to be running away from here like a bitten Brahmin. Okay, okay. Well, what is it? Well, I, well nothing. Can I, if I talk to him again... No, it doesn't go through the same dial again. But anyway, uh, well, tell me about the bikers. They didn't come here in such large numbers before. We never had a problem with them. And now they just come here in packs. I can't figure out what brings them here, and it doesn't matter. I just want them to go away. My wife and I can't even sleep at night with them outside. Well, looks like your son is going to do all it takes to become a biker. Through gritted teeth. My son is a fool. It is he is too naive. He doesn't understand what he's getting into. How I raised him to end up like this. It'd be hard to change his mind. He doesn't understand it yet. Having your own place. What could be better? He decided to trade his family for the highway. Stupid fool. By the time he realizes it's a waste of his life, it'll be too late. He needs to knock some sense into him before that scum takes him out of the house. Can you help? I don't know. How do I do that? Well, I have no idea. Maybe you need to humiliate the bikers in his eyes. Find something against them. Uh, show that it's dangerous to deal with them. It'd be even better if they were all dead, but that's too big a risk. The only hope I have is that the bikers will leave without letting them join their ranks. Can you help make that happen? Uh, okay, I'll try and get rid of the bikers and save your son. Thanks. Now we will need any help we can get. Does the wife say anything? She does not. Oh, but she has something back here that I can steal, which is garbage, but whatever. I'll steal it. And her knife. Give me the knife. There we go. Need the bathroom? No. How about in a father here? It's got a crowbar. There we go. You see anything else? I'm interested. How do you survive in this wilderness? As you can see, we work all day long. Only constant work helps us forget about our problems. It's really interesting how we live here, but ask someone else. I'm not in the mood. My neighbor loves to run his mouth, for example. Okay, so bikers. I hate the so much. Okay, I, think that, I guess that's it. All right, that's all he says. Another door over here. What's this guy say? What do you want? I'm interested in this village. Tell me the history of this place. Well, it's going to be a very sh short and boring typo there. <laughs> a very short and boring. Okay. Bridgeport was uninhabited since the war until our family settled here about six years ago. We were all from Reno. We left the place when life there became very bad and the only solution was to move away. Then we came across this wonderful place and decided to stay. We repaired the houses, cultivated the crops, even bred our own stock. You know, just settle down. Honestly, it's a lot better than in Reno, although sometimes I miss the luxuries of the big city. For example, so far, we have been unable to fully restore the electricity in Bridgeport. Sometimes we need medications. Also, our houses are deteriorating. And you managed to feed yourselves. Well, at first we lived on pre-war food stocks, which were well preserved thanks to the cold climate. It's all gone now. The local stores are looted. But in the meantime, we learned to grow crops and breed Brahmin. Sometimes Jacob brings something from the hunt. Everyone has contributed in any way they can. It's pretty cold in here. Doesn't look like it. Looks like it's desert, but okay. Yes, but fortunately we have Brahmin hides. They provide better protection from the cold than pre-war clothes, and even more than the skins of these giant lizards. Judging from old photographs, there were ski resorts here, with entire mountains completely covered with snow. The climate has probably changed a lot because we have never seen such a large amount of snow in our lives. But instead of the snow, we now have clean water that fills the lakes. There's even fish in there. In any case, the cold mountains are better than the hot deserts of Nevada. Aren't we still in Nevada? I don't know. So I already did this one. Yeah, okay. Are you alone in these parts? We rarely have travelers here. I have heard about a tribe of savages in the mountains to the south. If you're interested, talk to our prospector Jacob about it. Okay, so that must have been the other guy. Interesting, but let's change the subject. You said something about problems with the electricity. 
There is none. Jacob tried to run the generator to light the streets and houses, but so far, no results. How can I help? Well, that would be great. Talk to Jacob about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would be great. Just for me to help? Okay. I'll talk to him later. Tell me about something else, please. You mentioned needing medications. Is someone sick in your community? Well, my daughter needs help. Are you a doctor? It'd be a great luck if you were a doctor or at least had the standard first aid kit to help with a fever. I have some medical experience. Will you allow me to examine the patient? Sure, I'll be glad to help. I'll go I'll take a look later for now. Tell me something else. Oh, I can still do some stuff with that. I can give her a first aid kit right here. Let me go. Let me keep going. I'll come back to that. If the community needs supplies, why don't you establish a trade route with other settlements? Well, I thought about it, but we are so far away from major settlements that we can't contact anyone to offer a trade. Sometimes we really need it. For example, medicines and equipment are always appreciated. If I ever get to the big city, I will convey your offer to the caravan merchants. Ooh, that sounds cool. That is a really good idea. I'll make a list of things that we need. We can trade a small amount of food, clean water, and hides. Tell that to the caravan merchants, please. Okay, that's not a, it's not everything I wanted to know about, though. There's a little bit more. I'm interested in this village. Tell me about the history of this place. Well, very short. We left the place six years ago. Then we came across... Yeah, okay. We, I read all that. Okay. You were talking about the lack of urban comforts. Is your child in need of something here? We provide her with everything she needs, but before we moved out of Reno, she used to like Nuka-Cola. But local stocks ran out a long time ago, and there's nowhere to get more. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. All right. So I guess there's a couple quests right there. One more thing. Tell me about the bikers. We didn't call them here. In the past, bikers came to us, but never so many. They seemed somewhat anxious, as if they were waiting for something. I don't know what, but our family is already tired of these guys. It'd be better for us all if they'd leave soon. Okay. Um, well, here... Uh, hold on. Before I give him the Nuka-Cola and stuff... A couple things I want to try out. Painful cough. Skill. Doctor at 35%. Required doctor 55. You examine the patient and realize that with your current skill, you can only make a di only make a diagnosis? Alright. First aid? Nah, doctor 55. Okay. And the mom? Hello. Okay, well, what do you guys have on you? She's got a knife. I'm stealing her knife. She's got a flower. I'm stealing her flower. <laughs> yeah, Nuka, you think so? I don't know. Uh, let's steal from the dad. What does he have on him? Another knife. Eh, whatever. A bunch of knives from these guys. Anything in the bathroom? Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay. I do have one Nuka Cola bottle, but I have something I want to try out first. So. Okay, so there's the cherry Nuka-Cola here, but there's also one more thing. Okay, hold on a second. I know I, I, I should have kept some on me, but no, wait, hold on. No, I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> I got some, something I gotta try out real quick. Okay, so I have a couple of things here I just wanted to test out on this on this little girl, <laughs> just to see if it what it does, if it does anything. So here I have cherry Nuka-Cola, but I also have irradiated Nuka-Cola right here. So irradiated Nuka-Cola, amazing pre-war drink in a slightly dirty bottle, has a wonderful aftertaste and a very questionable glow in the dark. And then of course, here's cherry Nuka-Cola, Nuka-Cola cherry. A bottle of Nuka-Cola, a flavored non-alcoholic beverage of the post-nuclear world. It is made from the leaves of mutated cocoa and, coca and juice of some fruits, warm and exhausted with cherry flavor. And then here's the regular Nuka-Cola. A bottle of Nuka-Cola, the flavored soft drink of the post-nuclear world. Warm and flat. That's what it's supposed to be. It weighs one pound. So, real quick. We're going to dump the good one. And we're going to just have the cherry and the irradiated one. And let's see if she takes one or the other. First aid kit, treat her yourself. Tell me the history of this place. No, I can't actually give her the... Uh, I can't give her the other Nuka-Colas. Uh, let's go use it on her. You, you, you see her rated Nuka-Cola on the girl. Okay. <laughs> I don't think she's going to die, though. <laughs> but she is slightly irradiated. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I don't think it's going to do anything, though. Because you can't actually... I don't think there's anything built for the quest, but built into the script for that. Anyway, I uh, here, take Nuka-Cola for your daughter. It's a gift. 
A gift? Well, thanks. Such care for children is a weird thing these days. You're always welcome. Five experience points. Oh, you can give him more, and you give oh, you get five ex you give five XP for every bottle of Nuka Cola. Are you kidding me? Hold on a second. I'll be right back. Save. So, here we go. Now we're pretty much back where we left off. Uh, here, take Nuka Cola for your daughter. It's a gift. There's five experience points. That's going to be like the cheapest gift to cheapest experience points. Let's give him, uh, here regarding the patient, here's a first aid kit. Treat her yourself because I don't have a doctor skill for it. You gain 350 experience points. Thank you. It will, it will help not only my daughter, but everyone. There is always some health issues around here. You're welcome. And actually, hold on. No, let me see. Hi, she says. Okay, cool. Uh, but does he say anything new? No, it does not. Okay, so let me reload that. Okay, so here's the Nuka Cola, and if I go over here and actually doctor skill on her, so I'm, I'm at doctor thirty-five. But if I have a doctor's bag, how much does that actually improve my skill? Use the doctor bag on her. Girl already looks it looks healthy already. Okay, so that doesn't do anything on its own. <laughs> um so he forgot to add the, the part of the script where you have to where you, where a doctor's bag will provide bonus points. That is too bad. That is too bad. But okay, let me go ahead and just put some points into doctor skill. I want to see if there's any difference in experience. So 20 points in here. 55 doctor the treatment was successful you examine the patient for real okay yeah the treatment was successful that's it okay then you can talk, talk to the dad again your daughter is fine now 350 xp okay thank you you brought joy to our house we don't forget the thoughts okay take care yeah okay same thing same thing all caps goes for nuke nuke xp exactly <laughs> exactly well okay so i gotta check one thing real quick and that's if when you heal her you still get the xp if when you heal her, you still get the xp then i will go ahead and, and uh and do that uh, but if if she has to stay poisoned or whatever to, in order to get the xp then that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna have to deal with uh, things in a little bit differently we'll see okay um Here's a first aid kit. Treat her yourself. 350 XP. Thank you. Help your daughter, but everyone. Here's some. Uh, there's always some health issues around here. You're welcome. And here, take a Nuka Cola. It's a gift. All right, five XP. And once again, all right, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna be right back. <laughs> uh, I have to get some uh, energy fuel, energy cell stuff, and put it into my car before I get anywhere. But I'm gonna be right back. I think she can do over the 3,000 Nuka Cola balls. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> But that's, but if I can get that much XP, <laughs> so it's five XP times 3000, right? So that's um, 15,000 XP. If I can get 15,000 XP, hold on, how many, how many is that? Um, that's another level entirely. I, I'm only 8,000 away from another level right there. <laughs> Bridgeport, all right, here we go. So let's go try out. Let's go see how, how, how well this works. Okay, so the kid's all better. Oh. Let's give it a save. Oh, I forgot to get the drugs. Got to get the drugs. Get the Nuka Cola. <laughs> Let's drop all that. Let's pick up as much as I can carry this. Let's see how much Nuka Cola I can force feed this kid. Let's see if I can fit him, uh, feed him 285 times 5. Let's see what we get her. Okay. Um, all right, so it's you and then one, one. Okay, cool. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, bringing a tenth Nuka Cola bottle, you have earned a better reputation for local from local residents. Nine. Okay, cool. Well, that was ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There's a 10th one again. Okay, 21. I mean, I'm getting better reputation every time I do this too. <laughs> All 
All right, I'm gonna lose count for a second here. So let's just get as much. Let's just, leave, let's just go to the next level. But still, uh, it can't be that far. Maybe it's pretty far though. Feet to death, knee. <laughs> But everybody's gonna have a super positive reputation about me. Either that or it's gonna go back around until they really hate me. I don't know. It depends on how the variable's stored. Where am I at? 163644. Alright, yeah, we're definitely going up five at a time. This might take a little longer than I want to, though. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a repeating script. No checks on it at all. Oops, I must have missed something there. No, wait, 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 wait. He stopped accepting. He stopped accepting bottles? I only got like a couple hundred out of that. I stopped expecting bottles. <laughs> oh, I missed it. Can you clip that? Can you clip that real quick? I want to see if he said anything different. Oh, so I only got, so I had 285. I literally gave him 98 bottles. And that's when he cut me off. <laughs> was that 98 bottles? Okay, so right here, It says a gift, and then it goes straight into it. All right, so it's right here. This is where it happens. This is a gift. Well, thanks. Uh, such care for children is a rare thing. And then I do it one more time right here. And what does he say? What do you want? I'm interested in this village. Tell me the history of this place. It's just gone. It's just gone. Okay. Well, good to know. I figured out there's a max number of bottles you can use on, on the kid here before the dad doesn't give you anything else, which is too bad. <laughs> which is too bad. How's the kid doing? Is she dead from overdosing on Nuka-Cola? No, I guess she's okay. <laughs> but that's still funny. That's still funny. Anyway, um, all right, we took care of the kid. <laughs> uh, let's, let's rest until evening. So it's daylight, but it can switch to nighttime here in a second. No, that's not what I wanted to do. You know what? Forget you. Forget all of you. I'll be right back. I'm going to go and, and load up the stock on... What the hell? Locals who chose the path of crime? Okay. I'm just going to go load up some Nuka-Cola things real quick. <laughs> for no real good reason. All right. Good enough for now. Let's go talk to the caravans. Let's have a conversation with these guys. Let's see, I think this guy here. Yes, can, how can I help you? Okay, no, nothing from this guy, all right. One of these guys. City, where are you heading? No, okay. There you go. Bridgeport needs some things. Here's the list. Will you take the order? Honestly speaking, even in this difficult time for us, this contact doesn't look serious. We will have to go too far, and the pay is not that good. It may even cost us extra in the end. Too risky. Oh, I got to rep caravans, maybe? I could promise you a good deal. My reputation among caravan merchants will back that up. I apparently have a reputation among caravan merchants. Yes, seems like it can be a good deal. It's on our way anyway. Great, you can handle this without me from now on. The You gain 500 experience points. The caravan route to Bridgeport is open. Well, that was really easy. Well, damn, nice. Okay, let's head back. Back to Bridgeport, don't you dare crash on me. Locals, which, uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, we're back at Bridgeport again. Okay. No, you son of a bitch! You gotta do this to me. Of course you are. Of course you are. I knew it. I knew, I knew it was gonna crash on me. <laughs> Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, that's what it does every time right before it's going to crash. 
Back to Bridgeport. Save, and it didn't crash. All right, cool. Okay. So I, I just I just maxed out the kids. Oh, it's been some time. Maybe if I take some in now, let's see a hundred. Let's see if uh, let's see if the kid still wants them now. And nope, I can't I can't give them any more. Oh well, I thought there might be a time limit or something like that. But oh well, I too bad. So it's too bad I can't use any more. I can't, I can't give this guy any more any more Nuka-Cola to get more XP. But I got as much XP as I possibly could out of it. I'm kind of curious if it's actually built into the script intentionally. But, all right, well, whatever. Let's keep going. Everybody in town should have a really good feeling about me now. So, well, what is it? Do, do, do. Nope, nothing new here. How about this kid? Does he say anything new? Hi, do you remember your promise to help me? Hurry, the bikers could leave at any moment. Let's talk about you joining the gang. Uh, so, same dialogue as before. They want to give me some tests pistol and a fist fight can't help you right now okay how about let's talk to him your father does not want you to go with the bikers i don't need his permission to live in a hole like bridgeport is not for me i'm better off with the bikers speech 75 which i think i do have you're making a mistake you have a home and a family that needs you the bikers are just a bunch of strangers so i'm sick of this place you're telling me to just stay here i'd rather die Look at yourself. You're nothing like the bikers. Even if you pass all the tests, you won't be able to live like they do. Eventually, you'll become only a burden to them. Think about your family. Not many have the luxury to live in a place like this. Well, I didn't think about that. I thought I would learn everything in my time. But you're right. Am I like them? No. I won't pass the tests. In my home, as much as I don't want to rot here, I can see your point. This is the only place where I'm really needed. Man, I'm confused. Okay, <laughs> the thing is, you're not ready. So give me some time to think about the answer now. <laughs> Let's come back to your father and tell him you'll stay with him. It will be best for everyone. Okay, I'll do that. Alternatively, you could give him the equipment and have him join the bikers. Let's do that real quick. Um, what I need painkiller, so a medic bag, and I need um, a pistol. We're not going to give him a good pistol. We're going to give him a shitty pistol, of course. The cheapest shitty... Oh, maybe I can give him an energy pistol. That'd be cool. I don't think it'll do any good because he doesn't use it or anything like that, but still. Painkiller. I actually have some painkillers. There we go. Let's talk about your joining the gang. Uh, take this gun. Give the 10 millimeter pistol. 250 XP for that. Wow, a real gun! Superb! Now I have to learn how to use it. Can you teach me? Small weapon 75, which I don't have. Honestly, my shooting skills are below average. You'll have to do it without me. <laughs> Fine, I'll ask that old prospector from the farmhouses. He shoots good and probably won't tell my dad about it. Thanks for the help. You're welcome. Alright, and take a painkiller. Will this help with the pain? Great, just what I need. Thanks, you're welcome. Now I'm ready. I'll have to practice a little and go to the chief. Thank you. This day will change my life, you understand? Now about that stash I promised to tell you about. I don't want to know about it. I wouldn't steal from a farmer. Yes, tell me. Okay, it's in the bathroom under the tub. You just have to take the planks off the floor under the tub. Great, I will check it out. So that'll be back here, I think. Um, not so easy to get to. On closer examination, you realize that you won't be taking your bath in this tub after all. Of course not. Um, so can I actually can I actually get to the thing here? I can't, I can't actually, god damn it, that sucks. Oh, <laughs> uh, because I'm invisible, I can't actually get it. Oh well. So you see anything new? Your father does not want you to go with the bikers. See me 75, I can convince him otherwise. I, okay, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm gonna go back. If, am I going to get double AXP for this? What about this guy? Uh, oh, wait, this guy says something about electricity, hold on. What about bikers? Nope, okay, okay, never mind. He doesn't say anything. Okay, interesting. Okay, well, let's convince this guy not to go now that I've given him a pistol <laughs> and some and some drugs. Your father does not want you to go with the bikers. Speech 75. Look at yourself. You're nothing like the bikers. Come back to your father. Okay, yeah, here we go. Okay, I'll do it. All right, cool. All right. I'm staying. Perhaps I'll leave. Perhaps I will have to leave someday, but for now, I'm staying. All right. He's, okay, so you've got, maybe I get a little bit of extra XP out of that. How about this? Um, well, what is it? I managed to convince Dante to stay home. 
350 XP. So two times 350 XP. You can theoretically get 700 XP out of this. Unbelievable. He used to be convinced only by hitting him on the back with a stick. And you managed to deal with words? How unexpected. I hope he's learned his lesson. Thank you for your help. Consider yourself a guest in my house from now on. Great. Well, I will leave you two alone then. And he says nothing else new. Okay. Well, there's that quest taken care of. <laughs> I didn't think I could actually do both of them, but all right, this guy wrote it so that I could do both of them. How about this guy? What do you want? Uh, they say you're trying to fix the electricity in the city. How's it going so far? Well, I lack the skills and time to deal with this issue. Why? Want to help? Mind you, we have nothing to pay for your service. I just want to be helpful. Listen, there is a backup generator in the garage across the street. It's working, but I haven't been able to get power to the houses. Apparently, I'm a bad electrician. <laughs> Go figure. How do you fix it? I don't know. You have to look all over town, check switchboards, dig into the transformer, deal with corrosion. If you're a good technician and smart enough, you'll fix it in no time. Isn't there a power station here? No, the power source is not here. Bridgeport gets its power from somewhere else through the power lines. Really? Interesting. How much longer will the generator last if we fix it? We have small needs, light, heating, kitchen utilities. We would have enough stored energy to provide for our families for at least 10 years. Oh, okay. I'll see what I can do. Yes, that's right. Invisible man cannot reach the secret bathtub. Exactly. <laughs> not not getting any, any ill-gotten gains today. <laughs> well, anyway. So, to fix this, there's a little spot over here with a small generator in it. And this is the generator they're talking about. There is, of course, nothing else in here. Can I use this on the generator? It This will hardly help here. I bet it won't. But, of course, you can use repair on the generator. Um, you do need, like, 50 repair or something like that. Uh, you turn on the generator. As expected, it works great. Now all that's left is to deal with the external power grid. So there's a little electrical board here. You repair on this you got a chances of 60 percent which means that uh you need like 30 or something like that repair in order to get through that you're unable to rewire the generator to send the electricity where it is necessary chance of 60 percent well let's go ahead and grab a pliers and see how much higher we can get that those chances to go pliers and you didn't take the plasma pistol which is too bad pliers All right, there you go. You have to direct the current to the street transformer. And this is the street transformer. Street distribution transformer. Big old thing right at the beginning, of course. Skill science. Hello? You failed to learn anything. Repair. You have failed to achieve the desired result. Chance is 40%, and then we'll do one more time like that. The street transformer now works and supplies buildings with energy. All that's left is to make sure if the electricity is supplied properly. Okay, is the electricity supplied properly? Let's talk to this guy. Does he say anything new? No. Next door? You? Nope, okay. How about you? You? Say you're gonna fix the electricity. Just wanna be helpful. Okay, not yet. Okay, so there's some little boxes right here. A panel. Electrical panel with a counter. Serves to supply electricity to the house. So let's do repair on the panel. Gain 250 experience points. This house is now powered with electricity. Does he say anything new? No, he doesn't say anything new at all. I gave him power and he's like, ah. <laughs> How about this guy? 250 more experience points. How about the, does he say anything new? No, he doesn't say anything new either. <laughs> How about the, the wife? No. All right, last one. Two, another 250 experience points, so 750 for all three houses. Does he say anything, say anything new? What is it? Did you manage to repair the power grid? Terrific! Thank you so much. Now life here will be much easier, especially in the cold winter. Here, take some fruit from the plate. Help yourself. As soon as we get an electric oven going, the first thing I'll ask my wife is to cook an apple pie. You're always welcome. And that's it. That's all the dialogue there is for that. All right, nice, cool. There's one more over here, though. Repair that. 
Can I get in here now? No, it's locked, of course. Does anybody say anything about the locked door? No. Mean folks? <laughs> I don't know, man. They just don't... They just don't talk. Um, no, he doesn't say anything about that extra house that has a locked door. I see that you were able to fix the electricity. Thank you. You've been a great help. I don't know how to repay you. Here, take this whiskey. I found it in the old house and was saving it for the holiday. But it's better to share it with a good man. You're welcome. And nope, he doesn't say anything about the other house as either. Except that apparently that's where he was storing his whiskey, but it's but it's still unopened. But I got 500 experience points to, for talking to Jacob after that air. So that's uh, not just 750, that's a 1250 if you go through the whole thing and talk to everybody. All right, well, let's... Uh, oh, how about this guy? Does he say anything new? No, no, no. Okay. Oh, it's only one bottle? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, we're, we got some dynamite. Let's go see what's in the building if, if, and if it's worth anything. Uh, let's do this. There we go. Blow out the door. There we go. What is in here? You will need not only your hands, but also your head to study the publications on these shelves. Science? These shelves are lined with a variety of pre-war pamphlets and books, as well as the personal records of the last owner. In general, these materials cover the history of Bridgeport. How interesting. So now we got some lore we got to read. Okay, so the history of Bridgeport. Read this section on the pre-war history of the settlement. It was a small town, mostly inhabited mainly by two types of people, rich families and spa workers. Bridgeport was famous for its mountain resorts, with lakes full of trout and pristine snowy slopes. A quiet place, almost a paradise, suitable for a carefree life. Partly because of this, many wealthy residents of Nevada and California set up their vacation homes here for various holidays and weekends. Read the section on the year 2077. According to bits and pieces of information, the village was completely wiped out during the Great War. Locals had nowhere to hide from the radiation brought by the winds from the destroyed by nuclear explosions Los Angeles to the south and Area 51 to the northeast. Realizing their doom, many residents threw a farewell party on the streets of the city, determined to meet death with a smile on their face. Read the section on the post-war history of the settlement. The village has probably been un uninhabited since the day when the population was wiped out in 2077. Less than a decade ago, the first settlers, refugees from Reno, brought life back to the village. That's all you're going to say? That's lame. Leave. But you got 300 experience points. Can I steal from it? Uh, there's nothing in here to steal. <laughs> all right, whatever. What's this? Another thing of whiskey. Uh, this must be where the guy was hiding the whiskey. <laughs> oh, well. Well, those are all those quests. And I believe that's everything to do here in Bridgeport. So let's go ahead and finish up. Finish up this little quest. Let's tell the bikers to get out. The garrison in Hawthorne got jacked. Its automatic defense systems no longer work. You might want to pay a visit there. Your report on the Hawthorne situation caused quite a stir. Apparently the bikers will soon leave Bridgeport to the light of the rednecks. Oh, really? Jay hasn't contacted us yet. We've been waiting for this news for quite a long time. Also, frankly speaking, the rednecks around here are starting to get on our nerves. Move to the base as soon as everybody's ready. All right, so you're still waiting for a message from Hawthorne? <laughs> well, yeah, we can smell something's changing, Jay, da la la la. Okay, bye, <laughs> whatever. All right, so these guys are gone. How do you join a biker gang? I'm a veteran of the New Reno Civil War. Back then, local businessmen used to employ... Really? This is a, this is a description of how he joined the local biker gang. I wanted to join. I wanted to join. Can I join? Tell me about your gang. Why did Jay need to go to the Hawthorne? Should become interested in governmental law. Okay, now that's it. How, how do I join? I want to join. I can't. Oh, well. I can't steal his bike either. It would be nice if I could do that. I'm pretty sure this is actually a Fallout 3 bike. <laughs> The, oh, so if I go and talk to these guys, will they say anything now? No, the bikers are not gone yet, technically, but I want to see if they do say anything different. No, okay. Yeah. Okay, so if you just leave the map and come back, the bikers should be gone. And they're gone. Look at that. 
All right, let's go talk to everybody. What does this guy say? Sting, perhaps, blah, 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 blah. How about this guy? Uh, what about the bikers? I have nothing against the way of life. That's the same dialogue as before. Uh, whatever. The, they're gone. They're gone, dude. Get over it. <laughs> uh, tell me about the bikers. They're gone. Your wife can't even, and you can't even sleep with night with them outside. They're gone. They're not here. What are you complaining about? You jerk. <laughs> Last guy. Um, tell me about the bikers. We didn't call them here, blah, blah, blah. But they're gone. Do you gotta tell me what, what? Wait, hold on. Hold on, he said something about a smell. All right, so let's run off the map real quick and then come back. Make sure all the bikers are gone. And then run back over to this guy because there's apparently something where he's, a dialogue here where he says there's a smell. What is that smell? As I said, my wife cooked an apple pie. You deserve a little for your good deeds. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> I got some apple pie. All right, that's what that smell was. All right. <laughs> I can't tell if it's a good or a bad smell. It just looked like it. Does this guy say anything new that the bikers are gone? Some of the bikers, they came from the north, blah, 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 blah. They're, they're gone. They're, they're not my bikers. What are you guys complaining about? I swear. All right, well, anyway, those are all the quests that are here. The bikers are not here. The caravan should be on its way here, but it ain't happening yet. That's ah, so no big deal. But nonetheless, uh, that was Bridgeport. Actually, hold on. Let me take a look one more time at the status for the total recall. Biker chase. Find Jay and Hawthorne. So now we got to go to Hawthorne. Here's Hawthorne. What? How is this possible? Now, I'm going to show you this, guys, real quick. A message from Jay Kukish pops up on your Pip-Boy screen. It says so here. Now, when I originally played this mod, I'm going to do this again. When I originally played this mod, I popped over to Hawthorne and went into Garrison territory first. Ah, now it, here it says that uh, it says the, the message from Jay Kukish pops up on your Pip-Boy screen here as well. So let's do this one more time. And we're gonna go all the way in to Hangar V9. And you also get a message here. All right, so this wasn't, this message didn't pop up on my screen at all the first time I came through this, the first time I played this this mod, the, the original version of this mod, not this version. This version has a, a couple fixes in it. This is one of those fixes so that even if you, if you go into these back areas here in the Hawthorne area, you will still get the same message. A message from Jay Kushkis pops up on your Pip-Boy screen. Good to know. Good to know. Jay's message. Here it is. I didn't expect you to come this far. Still, if you did, this is not accidental. You will have to try very hard to meet me, infiltrate military hangar V9 in the north, and find the radio jammer. To reduce the risk, I suggest turning off the power on the underground level. Next, install the jammer and the radar equipment on the second floor of the garrison building and wait for me near the exit. That is all. That is all. Okay, so the radar jammer is down here. Um, when you go into this entrance the first time, actually, I think you have to go through there. Go out here. Go through there to get into the entrance the first time. Um, the radar jammer is like, I think it's in one of these spots. I think it's in there, actually. That's where it's at. And I've totally looted the place. And I've even taken a look back here. There's not much back here yet, but there's definitely some stuff back here. A little hidden area. But this is where the final encounter, or the final encounter, this is where the next scene is going to take place. So let's go ahead and get into this. Run my butt back out. Now, it's not exactly obvious where the garrison is. There's nothing here that says anything. But this is the garrison right here. And what you're supposed to do... System loaded, start documents by date. Yeah, nothing here. What you're supposed to do is go over to these radar equipment. This radar equipment right here, it says. And use the jammer on it. So I have to go get the gar the... I have to go get the jammer real quick. Where's my car? My car is all the way back here because it parks it back here. You're not allowed to drive it up farther. 
why I don't know. And we're looking for this guy. Oh, there's the apple pie. <laughs> I got two apple pies. Mmm, a pie made of the maize dough and muta fruits. Okay. <laughs> Grandma's apple pie. <laughs> I didn't even notice that before. All right, anyway, um, okay, let's just, we can just take the car back. Not that the car will follow us, which is unfortunate, but we should take the car back to the garrison territory. Uh, at least it says garrison on the map, so you get an idea of where it is. But this is the garrison right here. Run upstairs. Run over here. Put this in your inventory slot. Use on, and let's save it right here. Use on this guy. You wake up in a bright, closed room. You see a biker watching you through thick glass. Somehow he can see you, even though you're invisible. You. Stay calm. The paralyzing agent may give you a little headache, but you'll be back to normal in no time. So, it was a trap. Let me out of here, you bastard, immediately. Threats won't help you. You can't get out of here unless I let you. So just sit tight and don't move. Or what, you knock me out again? Wait till I get my hands on you. Maybe you'll get that chance, but for now, you're going to stay locked up. I wanted to ensure the safeness of our conversation. Safeness? You're just a pussy hiding behind glass because you're afraid of me. <laughs> Your attempts to piss me off are ridiculous and pathetic. The kind of reaction I expected from the residents of the vault. You are like children suffering from teenage problems and delusions far beyond your age. I'll wait until you calm down. After all, there's nothing preventing me from leaving, unlike you. You're not leaving until you spit out the truth. Tell me, bitch. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> okay, he's going to tell me anyway. There's been a bug planted in your Pip-Boy. It is most likely present in all Pip-Boys that were issued to the dwellers of Vault 8. I used it to track you down, but so could someone else. The signal jammer temporarily solved that problem. Don't worry, I've already dismantled the bug, just in case. Jesus, really? Bullshit, you already warned those Bridgeport bikers, didn't you? No, I have a strained relationship with my brothers. We have different paths, though admittedly I was the one who started the rumor that something was going to happen in Hawthorne. Is something really going to happen here? Hawthorne was a military base before the Great War. The military themselves mothballed it and left. The small local population gradually died out. Many prospectors tried to reach the resources of this base, but it would have been better for them to stay away. Anyway, I'm here for another reason. The whole Vault 8 thing is clearly military and government related. I came here looking for information. Okay, wait, so you don't actually know anything? Why then did you steal the device from the vault then? Oh yeah, you don't remember, right? <laughs> the employer warned me. Wow, interesting dialogue options I've got here. Let's go, let's go with the first one. Dr. Wilmoth works wonders. He restored my memory and he can treat radiation poisoning. Yes, he's a real wizard and he has an autodoc. You really believe that? Autodoc is unable to conduct such a serious operation. I've seen more sophisticated devices, but even they were not able to replace the consciousness of the patient. And to erase someone's memory, he suddenly chuckles. <laughs> you don't need an autodoc for that. Most likely there's something else going on in your vault that you don't know about. Something that slipped out of your mind while Doc was doing his experiments on you. There's three different options here as well. I'll start with the first one. I suppose... Wait a minute, don't bullshit me, you son of a bitch. It's because of you I lost my memory. It was my employer who deprived you of your memory. I only used your body as an excuse to enter the vault. You used my body? What? And my old clothes and stuff to make it look a little more natural. What? Am I, am I wearing your old clothes? The fuck? What kind of used my body did you do? Should have known you're just a pathetic mercenary. And what was your job in the vault? My job was to get into the vault, knock out the guards, and steal the device. You don't need me to tell you that. What were you talking about with the overseer before you knocked him out? It was a long conversation. Basically, the old man was interested in my life outside the city, and I asked about the vaults and its technologies. I'm not going to repeat it all. What is the purpose of the device you stole? Well, at first, I couldn't understand it myself. It was only in Area 51 that I managed to figure it out. There were the most advanced technologies that I had ever seen anywhere else. What do you mean? The crystal-based information storage module was a very rare and breakthrough technology at the time of the war. Why the hell did it end up in such a miserable place as a bomb vault? I couldn't find the means of reading the data, but my guess is that the disk contains programs to coordinate the automatic control systems of the vault. And probably something else. Not so obvious. Okay. Who's that employer you mentioned? I would like to know it too. Who he is, where he got your body, why he needed a device from the vault, I don't know any of this. But it doesn't interfere with my interests. 
Why didn't you deliver the device to your employer? When it comes to sophisticated pre-war technology, I don't care about employers. I decided to figure out what it is first. Such an opportunity with this kind of tech rarely presents itself. So you've already familiarized yourself with the vault and its inhabitants. What did you think of my home? You are like children. It's funny to explain to people like you that Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> what were you talking about with the overseer? What is the purpose of the device? What is the employer? Okay, that, this part of the story is clear now, I guess. 750 experience points there. And well, if it's clear to you, why the hell did you go to so much trouble to find me? At this point, I don't care about the vault or the device. I want revenge on the people who started all this, and you are one of them. I see. You can have the device. I don't care what happens to it now. I'll drop it here. I got something else to worry about now. Although, if you want to know more about such tech, I suggest you visit Area 51. A lot of beautiful things there. Even better than you've already seen. Looks at the monitors next to him. Ah, shit. What? We have company, and they'll have to be dealt with. You go straight, yeah, go straight to them. I hope they'll torture you slowly and painfully. He just chuckles back. He chuckles back and walks away to the elevator in dialogue. Okay, whatever. Um, so, it's actually really easy to get out of here. That door is locked, but this one's not. No, okay, I guess. No, they actually have to go use this thing here. Open the door to the reactor. Done. Um, and then it'll open. But there's actually a little bit more, so I'm going to reload that because you can get a slightly different dialogue. These options seem very uh, overridden. Maybe. Area 51. This is plot area. Maybe we'll meet that JC Denton guy. Who's the JC Denton guy? <laughs> so this this is main plot. That's why it's overwritten. You're hiding in this base for a reason, aren't you? Doors, monitors, traps, an arsenal of a true coward. Althor is a military base before the Great War. The military themselves mothballed on and left. The small local population gradually... Oh, that's the same dialogue it was before. Okay. This part of the story is clear now. So, so it doesn't matter which dialogue you choose, you always... Which option you choose, you always get the same dialogue, it looks like. 750 experience points. We have company. You go straight to them. This one he left with. He don't leave me here. I'm going to starve to death. Do that one. If you have any brains at all, you will find a way out. Farewell. Okay, that one doesn't do anything. I can, of course, end dialogue or tell him to go to hell. How about, wait, I want to fight too. Together, it'll be easier. Not a chance. I can't trust you after this conversation. There's too much ambiguity in what you say. First you play tough, then you beg. Either your head is a mess or you think I'm an idiot. That won't work. Speech 75, wait. I just don't know how to talk to you. Believe me, all I wanted is to better understand all this. He looks at you, then at the monitor, then back at you. Okay, but well once we're out of the danger zone, we'll part ways. If you want to get out of here without risk, try to sneak out the back door. It's located right near the railway gate of the hangar. A little room to the right. Try not to miss it. Okay, so he tells you... He tells you where the back door is. That's cool. Alright, thanks. And of course... This is actually open at this point? No, you still have to open it yourself. What a jerk. <laughs> and then he runs in and follows you around. As you would expect. But, uh, so this is the mysterious device. Um, mysterious device. High-tech device of unknown purpose. It weighs 10 pounds. Oh, it's missing the sparkly sparkles. It's missing the sparkly sparkles that my new modding tool will actually allow people to make sparkling sparkles in it. Oh, it's too bad. I wonder why he uh, did it that way on purpose. But anyway, and then here's all your stuff is actually in here. Everything you left, everything you had equipped on. Because you're naked in that room. The guy's just, just checking you out all naked and stuff. So what does he have on him? We're going to take all his junk because we're not going to use it. We're invisible. <laughs> does he have any talk conversation? I don't trust you, but you can be helpful in battle. Like stealing all your junk. <laughs> um, I don't believe there was anything back here. I don't think I could get to him. Um, all right, well, let's just go ahead and get back to the elevator. And there's some dudes. They're hiding over here a little bit. So here's a guy right here. I think there's a guy here. Here's a guy right here. They're all your pursuers. And there's a guy over here. So there's like three of them, maybe four. They are kind of a rough fight if you don't have power armor at this point. Um, they're even kind of rough even if you do have fire armor, but that's all right because I'm invisible and it doesn't matter to me. So I'm just going to over here and steal stuff from them. I'm going to steal all their ammo because for no good reason, you know. <laughs> Stealing the ammo, please. Thank you. And, and here's my buddy here just tagging along. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> he, he, they don't really care that they can see him, but they don't care either. <laughs> it's only me they're concerned about. 
taking all your ammo, dude. One way or the other, I don't care. There we go. All right, so we took all our ammo. Next, we can go over here. And there, there's a little back area over here. This is what he was talking about. Um, and what do you do? How do you get in here? There it is. And then there's the ladder out. That was supposed to work. Oh, that's right. It's because I'm over here now. It, it just it moved. It's because I'm invisible. I can't tell. Now that guy is still stuck back here. So whatever. But let's go to the exit grid and see what happens. Um, all right. So hangar V9 again. He's probably long since gone. Let's just run back in here. These guys are all gone, of course. That guy's no longer here, and this guy's no longer here, and all that. That guy's gone, too. I think, yeah, this guy's got to be gone, too, but I just want to see real quick. I don't see him anywhere. Okay, so let me do one more thing. We're going to run down here with the guy following us. We're just going to go straight to this exit grid instead of the other one. This is cool that he tells you about it, though. It, okay, that's it. He doesn't, like... He doesn't say anything, he just disappears. No, he's still here. He's still here? What the hell? <laughs> he doesn't actually leave? <laughs> what are you supposed to do with this guy? I, I guess... I guess maybe he might actually still be here even if I went this way. I don't know for sure on that one. Let me see if I can't get him to be, like, visible down here somehow. There we go. No, no, that's not visible enough. What? He just went through that fucking wall. What the hell, dude? You put a secret exit entrance on here? Come on. Stop going through the fucking wall. What is he doing? I can't go through the wall. Okay, that's visible. Take that. Go to the exit grid. Go back. Go to hangar V9. Run back in. Two can play the phantasmal ghost game indeed. Now is he actually gone? He's actually gone. He is actually gone. It's just super weird. <laughs> Alright, see, so, so he actually got to the exit grid that time. I don't know why it was like that, but anyway. Okay, so what do we have here? Do we have anything new for our quest? Uh, total Recall? No, okay, that's all there is. So find information about Project Vault 8 in Area 54. Or Area 51, rather. So this is not Area 51. We can go to Area 51. Grab my car first. Wasn't he supposed to die here in some event? I don't know. I never had a problem with him actually... With just rescuing him and getting out before, so I don't know for sure on that one. But Area 51 is right here, so let's go to Area 51 and see if there's anything going on over there. Wish to encounter a group of Golden Geckos? No. Area 51. Start with the airplane landing area. Oh, I left something in here. Let's go grab it. I have a bunch of junk in here. Holy shit. I did not realize I'll leave that much stuff in there. Seriously. Oh, well. Okay, so... Is, they, is he, like, hanging out over here somewhere? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's not in here anywhere. Was I supposed to go to Area 51? Not sure about this. No, right, let's just go over the exit grid. Grab my car again. Back to Vault City. I've got the item that Vault City wanted, so let's take it back to him. Drive up with my car. What happened here? Well, some people are panicking about it. Other ones are just playing darts over here. <laughs> There's a dude over here who's dead. You see the remains of Wink Gun Guard. Couple, couple dudes are dead. Do they have any items on him? Probably not. Nope. Nope. But these guys are just over here playing darts like nothing's happening. <laughs> they don't seem to care one bit. Long live Vault City. Yeah, alright, okay, whatever. 
Well, there's obviously a conversation to be had with one of these guys. This guy? No. This guy? Uh, yes, citizen, do you need something? No, nothing. Apparently not him, but this guy, obviously. Sergeant Graves. All right, let's have a conversation with the Sergeant Graves. Put that cookie down. Now, okay. What a strange coincidence. Just when our city is in trouble again, you show up. What happened here? We were attacked. Everything happened very quickly. The attacker seized the overseer and dragged him in outside the city's perimeter. I have a bad feeling about this. Too good to be a coincidence. That'll be everything. I managed to drag down the biker and retrieve the stolen device. We were attacked by mysterious people. My pit boy was bugged. Someone's been operating behind our backs, Sergeant, and they've been doing it for a long time. Mmm, the overseer used to say similar things, but I didn't understand him then. He said a change was coming, and we had to be ready. That was off the record. <laughs> okay, tell me about the attack. We were assaulted by a group of men in combat armor, led by a hooded figure. They infiltrated the city using some kind of paralyzing agent that we were unable to counter. While the guards and other citizens were incapacitated, the enemy seized the overseer and left the city perimeter. Some of the guards were able to recover and tried to apprehend the invaders, but were immediately killed. Uh, no, I'm supposed to be Schwarzenegger. If you, have you ever seen any Schwarzenegger movies? What did they need the overseer for? I assume it has something to do with the soul and device and the overseer's knowledge. He knows something about the vault that none of the guards or ordinary citizens do. In any case, the overseer was taken beyond our surveillance area. That is, too far away for us to reach. This means that it is unlikely that the kidnappers intend to bring him back. Wait, what are you suggesting? The overseer knows information about the vault that no one else does. Information that would be extremely dangerous if it was used in a wrong way. That's why it cannot fall into the hands of the kidnappers at any cost. Do you understand me, citizen? You're implying I should kill the overseer? Are you out of your mind? We have no choice. His knowledge is a weapon that can kill us all. All right. <laughs> what do they need the overseer for? The device overseer's knowledge. I already did that. Okay. Uh, so I have the device. I have the device here. I see. That's good. Still, only the overseer knows how to use it. What? 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 What the fuck? Okay, it looks like I have a new mission. Good. There is no one else I can trust with this. No one else has such knowledge and experience as you do. Okay. <laughs> Any more clues? We managed to determine that the kidnappers are traveling using train. Our radar tracked the overseer's pit boy until it got out of range. Perhaps this information will be useful if you find another radio station. Our radar track the overseer's pit boy until I okay. Understood. I'll see what I can do. Got a thousand experience points. You are our last hope, citizen. Okay, yeah, sure. First you suspend my citizenship and kick me out of the city, and now suddenly you're I'm, I'm your last hope. Great. Whatever. I'll take care of everything again. <laughs> That's some good writing. There is some good writing in here. Does he say anything else? There's nothing else to report. From now on, you'll have to act on your own. Take care. Now let's go see if the doctor says anything. Doc, what do you say? Have you met our news? Do you look terrible? Should have come by earlier? Okay, I'll go ahead and do the thing. Um, met our new servants yet? I think about the middle is step the pills. Okay, nothing else. Is this all the same dialogue it was before? Okay, so he says nothing you. Can I go downstairs yet? Uh, at least lower levels of the vault, but it don't have the code for the activation? What? What? What code do I need? Um, there's probably actually no way to get down there. <laughs> I should actually look it up though, but anyway. All right, well, we got a new quest. We're gonna have to go dig up the um, a radio station here, figure out what the, hell, what the hell's going on. Hop in here. So the nearest radio station is in Black Rock, I believe. No, not Black Rock. Lovelock. Radio station right there. Oh no, you son of a bitch! No! Of course it was gonna crash on me, of course. Of course. I'm almost out of gas, I just realized. Alright, love lock. Radio station. Run up here. Um no, there's no it's where's the downstairs? It's over here. There we go. And then was there anything down here? There is this computer, is that it? 
might actually be it. Okay. Welcome to the Lovelock Information Channel Broadcasting Network. Look for any record of the past broadcasts. Access granted. Searching complete. Determine the station signal coverage. Searching. Search complete. The list is mostly made up of various settlements where wiretapping was conducted before the war. Additional contacts include three military bases, Sierra, Hawthorne, and Area 51, several, uh, several, several vaults, 8, 13, and 15, and private laboratories. All of these contacts are located within or close to Nevada borders, but their exact locations are not listed. Radio operators don't need a contact's exact location. They just work within their channels. Okay. Scan the every frequency for a signal. The Lovelock radio station receives and transmits signals on a predetermined range of communication channels designated within Project Fat Man. F Project Fat Man! Wiretapping programs are not currently in effect. Access granted initializing program. You hear nothing but white noise on all channels. Hmm. That didn't help me any. No. Okay, fine. Um. Hmm. Metal Gear Solid 2 record? They could be. I don't know. Good question. Well, that didn't get me anywhere. Do I have to go back to Hawthorne? Oh, the Terminator movie. Of course, of course. I, I completely forgot about the Terminator movie. You know, you're right. That would have been a, probably the first pick for that one. Okay, so Battle Mountain. Oh, it has a biker camp. And there's a radio. There's a radio back here as well. Actually, does this guy say anything new? Not the repairs. Want to improve my weapon? Rifle, pistol? Nah, never mind. Have you heard a train passing by? I did. Have seen it many times, but we were unable to catch up. Who could be driving it? What do you think? No one, of course. This is a ghost train. What? Never heard of it? No, I didn't. So I will tell you about it only once. So listen carefully. A couple of automatic trains were launched before the war just for a test to see how it will do. So they drove all over Nevada and then pow, something broke in the automatic systems. And it crashed? No, these idiots from the railway stations tried to stop it, but all in vain. While they were trying, the war began. So to this day, it drives up and down the rails of Nevada. Hmm, funny tale. There's a train driving up and down the rails of Nevada. But in order to get to this radio station, is it this one here, I think? The terminal lights up with all the lights. <laughs> then they go out and the main monitor turns on. It's amazing how the tech still works. Follow the tracker signal from Overseer's Pip-Boy. You gain a thousand XP. There is a signal. The green dot is quickly moving to the northeast of Salt Lake. You will not be able to catch up with the kidnappers even using a car. The signal will soon be out of radar range. Check the radio. You only hear white noise. Shut down. All right, so we got to go to Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City? And yes, you're absolutely right, Kindergarten Cop. I can't believe I missed that one. You are absolutely right. I do feel like kind of an idiot for forgetting about Kindergarten Cop. Thank you for pointing that one out. Um. So I, did I, hold on. Right? Yeah, okay, I, did, I took the thing back. The guy got kidnapped. Right. And we've got a thousand experience points. We have we figured out where he's going. If we had status, we should be able to say total, total recall. No, not total recall. Vault City. Pursue the kidnappers of the overseer. Complete the warehouse and special assignment. I'm never gonna get the warehouse and special assignment done, but I will be able to complete to find the overseer, I think. If we go to Salt Lake City, and it doesn't crash this time. And I think we can just start here and we start asking people about it. It's worse until morning as usual. I could have sworn there was somebody who would tell you what to do once you got here. But there is a railway station, so if we head to the railway station... Railroad Depot. There is, of course, nothing to do here. <laughs> Well, this is where the ending of the game is supposed to take place. I don't believe that there is a time limit for this. I mean, this guy says something. No, he just asked for a job, doesn't he? 
Yeah, alright. This guy's the sheriff's anything? Are there any working trains riding through the city lately? Ha! Why do you want to know? Are you willing to die that badly? Then you better go to the gallows in the evening. More often than not, there is someone to bid this life farewell. Still, there are trains coming through here, right? Yes, there is one. Comes in the middle of the night. It rushes through at half speed without stopping. Vanishes heading west. They say that sometimes you can hear the soul of the driver playing harmonica. Those who saw the ghost train silhouette are afraid to cross the tracks. What if it suddenly appears out of nowhere and runs you over? Are you serious? Quiet. Some even tried to jump onto the roof of the wagon, but were burned to ashes by the infernal flames. Wow. How often does it drive by? Several times per season. Heading back and forth. It clearly has a very long track. Must be in need to collect a lot of souls on the road. Uh, okay. Skip the horror part. Do you know its final destination? I don't. Some believe that this train makes no stops or returns. Some even swear it can be in different places at the same time. Sounds like some drunken nonsense. Nevertheless, it exists, whatever it actually is. Half the city has seen it. Speech 65. Sheriff, enough of the fairy tales. You and I both know that the ghost train is quite material and not much different from an ordinary train. Someone sometimes rides the train on, on, in the north and west direction. Some people have also seen robots that still maintain the rear road in working order, but who needs it and why, no one knows. That clearly means it is real. And that's the dialogue for that. So the next part of the quest will actually be to fix up the railway station and fix up the train that is inside the railway station right here. So we can get actually take this sucker out and go somewhere with it. But I'm going to pick that up next week because I don't feel like I'm quite yet there with this. And I want to see if there's any other quests I want to do between now and then. Anyway, so let's go ahead and save this up in the start here. We'll just go ahead and save it right now. <gasps> no! But that's all right because I just saved it in the other spot. So we'll, I guess we'll start by reloading. I can save. Can Okay, now can I run over here? Renaissance Square, talk to the sheriff. Um, do, 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 do. Save? There we go. I'm going to save it now. Morning. There we go. There we go. All right. So we're going to save it here. I definitely remember what we're doing here. We're going to be making this train active. Okay. That was it. That's all I got for the night here, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm all saved here. Calling it a night there. Pick that up again next week. Hope you guys enjoyed that stream. <laughs>